About this time last year, I dug this drone out of storage and finally got it flying again. These days, my goal is to have it so it can autonomously follow me around like this, and we are getting incredibly close now for that being a reality. To achieve it, I've decided that I'm going to be using an NVIDIA Jetson Nano paired with an Oak D Lite depth camera, which has actually just released. Now, you might be looking at this drone and think, hmm, Matt, uh, your frames are a little bit on the small side. How are you going to fit this hardware on board? And honestly, you'd be right. I can just about get a GoPro under here and not much else, which is why I've gone and built another drone. World, meet Stanley. Without his battery installed, Stanley weighs 1.3 kilograms and can generate up to 6 kilograms of thrust at maximum power. I've learned from my mistakes when I built, well I should guess I should call it Mark 1 now, and I'm using a Pixhawk as the flight controller, which is then linked up to the Jetson Nano via a serial link, which is round the back here. Enough with the introductions, I want to show you how I built him. A good build always starts with a teardown. Something I haven't shown properly before is this camera setup on Mark 1 using another Raspberry Pi Zero. It draws power via a 5 volt battery eliminating circuit, BEC for short, stuck deep inside the electronics and it starts recording immediately after booting up. I needed that BEC for the Jetson Nano. <laughs> Your sacrifice! It's for the greater good! <laughs> One eBay purchase later, I had all the parts needed for the build. To save some research time, I bought everything as a kit. It came with these cheap hobby power motors, paired with 30 amp Simon K ESCs, and it also included 10 inch propellers. Check out this power distribution board. It actually forms a structural component of the frame. Hopefully, it stands up to some hard crashes. Step one of the build was to solder the ESCs and the Beck I stole from Mark 1 to the power distribution board. You'll be really happy to know I have finally learned how to do nice solder joints, and it was down to my solder temperatures not being high enough. Dodgy connection for now, but it looks like the Beck is working as expected. That is the soldering 100% done. I began the frame assembly with the motor arms. These screwed directly onto the power distribution board. I then installed the legs. It was a little frustrating to get these rubber o-rings into place. They grip onto two plastic poles, which then act as the underside mounting system of the frame. There's no instructions for this kit, so I'm sort of winging it as I go, really. So with any luck, I'm getting things in the right place. Oh my god, okay. Oh yes! Yes! New one, old one. Massive size difference. Check it out. <laughs> Off camera, I went ahead and installed the battery tray onto the underside mounting poles. I had this padding material laying around, so I used this as a nice surface to strap the battery onto. I'm using the battery from the Mark 1 drone here as a quick tester. A bit later on, I went and purchased a much bigger capacity 4S light though. I've just done a test fit of electronics, and it looks like the data cables from the back two ESCs aren't going to be long enough to actually connect up to the pixel. So I'm going to create some extension cables. Moving on, I installed the top plate, which gave some much needed rigidity to the frame. I could then think about installing the Pixhawk. To avoid vibration from the motors affecting sensors like the accelerometer, this needs to be installed with a dampening mount. Oh, you little f Such a utter f What the f This is such an f of a job. Oh my f I've just poked a f hole in this f thing. <clears throat> Moving on.
Hi, Caffeinated Matt here. I've just realised I have forgotten to install the transmitter receiver as well as other bits and gubbins inside this bit. So I'm going to take it apart again. Yeah! I think this wiring setup is correct with the signal wire on top, but I honestly don't know. I couldn't find anything online to make sure it's correct. So I'm like crossing my fingers hoping I don't kill anything. The next thing to do now is to wire up all the ESCs. This wiring needs to be done in a very particular order. For instance, this arm here is going to be corresponding to motor 3. So this needs to be plugged into the channel marked 3 on the Pixhawk. I use this super useful guide from RG Pilots to figure out which motor arm corresponds to the relevant channel on the Pixhawk. And I put a link to it in the description below. Let's push that in there, slight contact. Flash in. <laughs> it's motor time, it's motor time, it's motor time. It is critical to get these motors installed correctly. I made the mistake before on Mark 1 where I put them oh, completely wrong and it ended with the propellers flying off the drone instead of the drone taking off. Not what we want. So I'm going to spend some time actually you know, getting it right on paper before actually doing the installation. Do, 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 do. Damn, look at the size difference in these propellers. That's like almost double. Ow, that's <laughs> my neck. This next one is CCW, which is silver. We've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. I modified a case design from Thingiverse to install the Jetson Nano above the Pixhawk. When it's in place, the Jetson Nano will communicate via this telemetry 2 port. Whilst the case was printing, I got on with initial calibration of the drone. The first step was setting up my transmitter. I like to do this first to make sure I always have an emergency stop switch available. So the ESC should now be live. If I raise the throttle a little bit, it should start spinning. There we go! So a little trick I like to do to just verify that all the motors are installed correctly is to loosen off all the prop nuts and then... Oh, that one's tight already. Nice. Um, and then if they fly off, then you're pretty much guaranteed that the motor's been installed incorrectly. So the system's armed at the moment. So I'm just going to boost the throttle. There's one! With the motors installed correctly, watch how the prop nut pulls itself on. That's a good sign. So that's now is self-locking. When the motor is installed incorrectly, this happens. Fixing it is very straightforward though. You just switch two of the three wires going to the ESC and this reverses the motor rotation. I also calibrated the accelerometer and gyros at this point, but this is boring to watch. So here's some more slow-mo. I got a little bit distracted and created the serial cable for the Pixhawk to Jetson communication. The 3D print was done by this point, so I got to work installing the Jetson into it. This was not an easy task. Come on! Go through the hole. Oh my god. It's just slightly too little clearance. Like, hot, about a millimetre off. When in doubt, drill it out. Our next problem, I don't know if you can quite see, but this does not fit. <sighs> Time to break out the clippers. I'm gonna try and install this now on the drone. There's a few mountain points on the frame, which is where these holes should line up to. Now I've measured it, it should be right, but I've not actually checked it. So I'm hoping it's a case that I can just take the top plate off again and just put the screws through these holes. Right, close-ups, close-ups. Look at that, look at that. So it nicely sits over the Pixhawk, so there's plenty of space for it to move around and not be affected by vibration. Got the GPS wire going in the side there, hardware safety switch, and then I've cut a hole out, which I can now use to use USB, which is very hard to see in there, but it's there. All that's left is to wire up the Jetson and add the final touches. Stanley says hello. The 
Met Office has issued a rare red weather warning. Some very strong winds, particularly affecting coastal areas. Conditions really are brutal. There's driving, rain, dropping temperatures. First responders are worried about as a consequence of winds up to 80 miles per hour. Oh my God. Right, Stanley, <laughs> your test flights, they're postponed. You are not flying in those conditions. You may notice I have tied Stanley down. This is because I'm testing in quite a public space and I want everyone in the surrounding areas to be nice and safe. I've also removed the Wi-Fi antennae because when I was transporting Stanley to this test location, they decided to become loose. So rather than uh, getting stuck in the propellers, I decided it'd probably be best to take them off. Let's try that again. So much for uh, my attempts at safety, huh? The thing with science and engineering is that it's very easy to make mistakes. But you know what? That's okay. <laughs> For Stanley, I had one motor spinning in the wrong direction, and having a propeller come off showed me what the problem was and how to fix it. Did you see that? Maybe the motor direction is reversed and I missed it when I was setting everything up. <laughs> It crashed, but it flies. Oh yeah. I wish I could say he flew well after that fix, but instead another propeller came off during flight a good few meters off the ground. I lost control and I had to hit the emergency stop switch. So... This is why though that I say it's okay to make mistakes. Failure is honestly, it's the best way to learn. And for every success, you'd have failed countless times. I make a point in all my videos now to show you when things don't go well. Because at the end of the day, that is when you learn the most. Okay, we're rolling. Cool, right. So, I'm not very happy right now, as you can probably imagine. Um, Stanley will live again, but you're going to have to see that in the next episode of the series, because it's going to take me some while to repair him. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, hope you've learned something, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then.